So Jason Morehouse is joining us to talk about his first year as being an MHK. Um, I think I should start by, was it a surprise you got in? Because I mean... Oh yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean... It was a hope. I tried in 2011 and was about 40 votes off. Yeah. And with two sitting MHKs in 2016, who got strong mm. records really, it was yeah, a challenge. You've been seen as a quiet man. I mean, the, the papers were giving you a hard time. I think, or the media in general might give you a hard time initially. They, they never heard anything yeah, from you. I was actually surprised because it was kind of week five. <laughs> and I'd been away for one week, so I'd kind of been to four sittings. And I'd kind of been doing a lot behind the scenes, being in health and infrastructure and other constitu constituency work. It was, yeah, a surprise when Rob Callister said, your front page of the news, I said, what have I done? It was kind of nothing. It was like, oh, no, <laughs> that's not good. What, what's it been like for you? To, you know, to, I mean, did you follow it much before you became an um, MHK? I've always been a bit interested. I did my first degree in politics, philosophy and economics, so I've had some interest. And I always kind of knew that when Tony Brown stepped down, I wanted to have a go for Castletown. Mm. So, yeah, it's always been in the background, but I've not really done anything political. So, I mean, school teaching works, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you get a lot of younger votes, by the way? How did it work out? Um, you, a lot of your old... Uh, it was uh, quite boys, interesting. Girls? There was, we've, we've got this issue that those who've gone off and done degrees have vanished, <laughs> and there would be some, but there were some young candidates. So the vote, yeah, it was. I would get some, but you'd go out and yeah, g get every vote possible. So you can't take things for granted. So here you are. You're in. What? But when you hit those doorsteps, what was the message you were like banging at the time? It was basically, we're in an amazing place and we need to retain that. We are eating through reserves and we shouldn't be doing that. These are the good times and we need to be building reserves and strengthening what we've got that's good. So, I mean, you kept your manifesto, have you? Do you feel you're on message? Um, yeah, my manifesto was odd. Um, <laughs> Why? Yeah, it was basically a half, half side of A4. It was basically a list of bullet points, things I believed in, things that I thought were important, things like um, the television licence, things like um, recognising that it's our money that the government's spending. Um, it was really kind of ideas that I thought were important rather than going into details of I will do A, B and C because I knew that if I was to be looking get into, um, into Tim World then I'd be able to have an impact but I couldn't promise to make changes from day one. Have you made an impact? Um, hopefully, yeah. I've worked hard and it's kind of, when I stood, I was kind of looking at the economy and things like that, but a lot of my time has been spent with constituency issues. And just going back to the quiet man thing, when that kind of hit the papers and out to the website and someone had said, without Jason, our Christmas wouldn't have been as good as it was. Mm. And it was kind of, ah. Oh. And I think it's kind of those little things that you don't really think about that kind of, yeah, the show you make a difference, it's kind of what kind of keeps you going. So you're looking at social media, are you? Can't that be dangerous? Um, in terms of social media, I'm pretty useless at it. <laughs> Again, being a teacher, we're always told to stay away from Facebook. Yeah. And I had a Facebook account that I never used for about nine and a half years. And during the campaign, there was a wet weekend and I couldn't go on the doorstep. And I thought, I must do something. So I basically, did a bit on Facebook and after The Quiet Man, I've done a monthly statement saying what I've been doing and kind of challenges and breakthroughs and things. So okay. I've used it in that way rather than commenting day by day. You might have gone to the other extreme when you talk about seagulls and sandwiches. Um, that was an interesting one. I raised the topic in terms of the impact of girls. Um, a constituent raised the issue and the way the interview turned out the last line of the interview became the story. Um, I think it's an interesting topic, but why I was so impressed with it was it interested people. People got involved. On the doorstep, there was that recurring issue of it's politics, it doesn't relate to us. And I was saying, of course it does. It relates to children's education, it links to your tax, it links to um, prescriptions, it links to everything that you're experiencing. And it wasn't until the girls came out that suddenly, <laughs> people got interested and said, yeah, this is something that's... But that was a question, wasn't it? You, you yeah. Wrote it as a, I mean, do you think it's yeah. something you should have just gone quietly have a chat with somebody? Or do you think it um, should be raised 
in uh, the government. I, I just, parliament. Yeah, it was, it was one of those things. There's been articles in the Daily Telegraph. Um, there's been television programmes on it. There's been um, laws introduced in the UK about it. There's um, Liverpool spent a lot on um, f getting rid of the problem. And I just thought it was something that was worth asking what are we okay. doing? And, so. and what else have you got lined up for the next 12 months? Have you got, you know, Focus on things particularly. I mean, yeah. you know, in health, is yeah. Um, program for government's kind of going to guide us in the next twelve months, and um, demand, demand responsive transport is kind of the first thing that's hopefully going to come to fruition. It's there've been teething issues in terms of getting that through, but hopefully we're quite close to bringing that to fruition. Um, also, being in health, um, there's a lot of issues there which we're looking at, and yeah, trying to make progress on. So. Hopefully, be productive. Twelve months. Are you enjoying being in health? Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's just so wide and so intense, and there's so many issues that need to be. You supported the increase in the prescriptions. Um, at the departmental level, we all agree that. I understand to be done. that, yeah. but yeah. Do you, you personally, or as um, a I do feel that on an island where we're spending over seventeen million pounds, and the revenue is. 600,000, there's some kind of mismatch going on. Um, I do think that the way it's gone through the process has been good. The department put their ideas to Comin, Comin made suggestions, we looked at our ideas again, our ideas then went to um, the consultation and right through until the 12th of September, people could bring out their ideas, share their ideas, and those are currently being gone through, and that will kind of determine what we yeah. do. Uh, don't, don't you feel that maybe this is the sort of thing that should be done in the budget time? You know, it should come out once a year. So this, it's, cause it came out at sort of ra to me, it seemed like a random time of the year. I mean, there's always this, it's quite a major thing as well. Yeah, it, it's, it is a major thing, and it's kind of one of those ongoing um, things that are looked at. So yeah, it just there was it appeared the time was right, and we knew it was going to be quite a long, drawn out process. So in terms of where we are now, it's kind of the consultation has gone through. We we'll look at the response, and then we'll come back with mm. what we feel is needs to happen. So it's quite interesting. And with, you know, with the budget coming up, will there be more things that you, the health department will be uh, pressing for? More cuts, more um, things curtailed. The, the department's working hard. It is a big beast, and as such, it's going to be a challenge. But you know, we realist. Um, the council of ministers recognise it's a challenging yeah. thing, but are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, hugely. But, and what can you put it down to? Because I mean, it's quite a change in direction, right? Uh, not really. It's actually very, no? very similar. Oh, okay, go on. Yeah, explain. It's just, just the workload, the variety, um, dealing with people, yeah. trying to get results, um, massive reading, <laughs> trying to take quite complex things and simplify them into a way that people can um, relate to and take on board and think about and share. And of course, you, you, you stood for Castletown originally and then now yeah. the, the area's got changed and all that sort it's of thing. It's huge, yeah. Yeah, what's yeah, that like? Yeah, because when I stood in 2011, it was such a small, manageable constituency. I went around every house three times and I spent £300. <laughs> and in 2016, I had to nearly double my budget, which has horrified some And of shoe leather. <laughs> yeah, and well, t 2016, you couldn't actually walk, you know, you'd no. use the car. Yeah, yeah. You kind of got to the brain and realised you to go all the way through to the levels. Is it just, working? Um, it works in that people know a choice and every constituency has got two MHKs. One of the most memorable things from 2011 was a constituent saying that he felt it was unfair that he would only have one MHK and his friends in the neighbouring constituency would have three. Yeah. Um, it's solemn occasions that you'll get um, a constituent approaching both me and Miss Cregene separately, and it won't be until we kind of meet up or... You realise you've both been tackled. That's it. Do you have enough chit-chat? Do you get on well, you two? Oh, yeah, we get on very well. I think we do, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, we, we, yeah we, we meet up pretty frequently, and yes, yeah, it's a good relationship because he's kind of got the experience, and I've probably got some new ideas, so... Okay. And he's in education, that's where I've spent my life, so... Well, it's I was going to say, you know, when you, when the time comes, if you if you're there and the right calling comes, and you were asked to be a minister, would it be education you'd want? I think that's a way off, but just at the moment, I just want to get as many good 
resources possible. Or would you like to be a minister one time? I didn't say. Yeah. Um, I mean, which leads me to the thing: Would you stand in the future? That's well, all. yeah, it's, it's all in the future. Yes. And I think, in in a way, that the biggest thing that's hit me was the end of year one, and not being at school on the first day of term. You're missing and it. That that was the only kind of time I thought that's odd. Yeah. And Mum said to me. If you said do a swap, would you do a swap? I said no. So that kind of clarified it. But yeah, it was on oh, that first day of term not being there. Right. But yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and you know, I say being po a career politician, you, you, is it too early to say? But I mean, you know, do you see yourself doing this more? Yeah, you know, keep going after well, this. Well, I term? think it's it's down to results what you can actually achieve. Yeah. Um, in a classroom, you explain a piece of work, and then you test understanding. In politics, you have an idea, and you kind of push it and push it and push it, and then hopefully it comes to fruition. You've been worn down uh, by the system yet? Then? Uh, <laughs> oh, the, a bit. A bit. Well, well, the thing is, you can't. As with children, you've got to find other ways around it. <laughs> like, yeah. You're treating them as children. As well, as well, people. we're all children, aren't we? Really? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. kind of yeah. So the future is potentially to keep with this. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I know it's four years. Old, well, I think I'm in such a special place that you know. To be in this position to try and bring about change is so special. Have you, have you anything you got any regrets this first year? Um, you haven't been no, able to none do. at all. The only, the closest thing to have a regret was in 2016, when I missed and I thought, By I've, 40 got, I've, I've got my life. No, no, I thought I've got my life back. Right, right. And I know it's not regrets as such, but I knew that when I stood in 2016, I got to give everything, and I think it, it's. A really odd job in that you kind of always on call. And do you get and a lot of that? Yeah. But I, I quite like it, and because I was ready for it. Seagulls. Accept it. Yeah, <laughs> when, when, I, when I saw the headline, I thought, ah. And then you You're going to get a lot <laughs> The headline was bigger than the story, so yeah, it's. Okay. Yeah, because I actually went away that weekend, and everyone on the boat had got the paper. It's like, ah. We, we haven't seen a lot of you in front of our, our media. I know you've done bits of other. Do you think yeah. you, you, you got. So, you know, some MHKs are much more high profile. Some are almost on the radio constantly. Yeah. Know. Do you feel you've got your mix right yet? Um, I'm definitely saying more. I've asked the question at least every sitting since the start of the year. Um, I'm in two interesting departments. I've raised some interesting questions in Tim Ward and Keys, and I'm on the Economic Policy Review Committee, which is looking at some very important things. So. Yeah, I do feel that the balance at the moment is pretty good, definitely. Okay, we're coming to the rating moments. Have you seen these before? What do you give yeah. yourself out of ten? I'd say seven and a half. Okay, I like decimal yeah. point. I like yeah, point five. 7. Yeah, 5. it's a teach year, just kind of. It's yeah. very much a teach year. <laughs> and how do you think the Quail government's done? Um, I give for eight. It's quite strong. Yeah, there are definitely going to be challenges in the next twelve months. Um, I have concerns over Brexit in terms of a hard sell and Brexit and how that will impact on us. But I think the team that we've got in Team World is amazing, really. Um, it's not politically, really, so it's more business like. It's trying to do the best for the island. I think it's such an exciting time that we've got a group of people who can meet the challenges.